but we estimate it's average. Hey everybody and welcome to this video. In the last video I did on YouTube, I promised I would bring a an extended version of the big chimney build. And here it is, finally. We have to go back to the beginning and at the time when I bought the car, it was brand new, I was thinking to myself, uh, what kind of build can I visualize in my head? Uh, I was trying to achieve two goals, basically that it would be a daily driver and then I could go off-roading in the most extreme versatile conditions as most of you guys know we have here in Iceland. Now that's quite a task. And when I started looking on the internet, trying to find some other builds that would resemble some of my visions, um, I found a few, but none of them basically fit the description or the, the picture I had in my head of the final end result. Although there's a lot of beautiful builds out there, but most of them, sorry to say, that don't fit the Icelandic conditions. And what is the Icelandic conditions? That's snow. That's basically you have to drive the vehicle in snow. Heavy, heavy snow. And you need big tires to drive in snow here. So most of these cars you're looking at here, they got 29, 31, 32 inch tires maybe. But I was thinking about putting 35 inch tires underneath there. Now that's overdoing it, but still that's what it needs to drive in snow. So on the internet I found a few pictures or you might say renderings of such a build or basically the picture I had in my head. And that, what, that picture or that rendering uh, came out even before the chimney came out and here it is. You can see the fender flares there, you can see the, the big tires, it's got a low stance and I liked it. I was thinking about a 6x6 six six, but that, that's a later project. Okay so we're getting ready to take the car into the garage to a good friend of mine who owns this garage and the name of uh, the company is Breitir which translates to converter or even transformers basically. Now this shop specializes in transforming uh, vehicles into very extreme off-road vehicles. Now what you're looking at here is a inflation deflation system and you can see the size of those tires. They basically carry this car on top of the snow when it's driving in snow. And um, so we took the car into the shop and we started our chimney build. We had to fit, start by fitting 35 inch tires to see how much uh, we would have to cut from the inner fender molds or the fender flares. And uh, to begin with, we had a problem that, especially in the front, where the steering ratio, basically when you turn the steering wheel left, right, it was hitting the, the, the fender walls. So that would ruin the fender walls and also the tire. And also when it's flexing out of the uh, suspension. So basically we had to do some cutting. Or a lot of cutting, that is. As you can see here on, on this video, we basically we had to cut a lot of metal to be able to fit that 35 inch tires underneath there. And the end result was that we made the 35 inch tires fit. And uh, then we could start the build on the fender flares. Now one of the uh, features I was thinking about is uh, extra, carrying extra gasoline. Here you can see the rear exhaust. We basically took that out and we installed a 35 liter extra fuel tank which was custom built which um, makes the car go about five to six hundred kilometers. I also carry a jerry can in the back 25 liters 
So it's just about 800 kilometers you can go off-road. That's enough. But there are uh, some other options that have come uh, available recently, and that's the 80 liter fuel tank from Long Ranger. And I might do that later on, but that would be also a future project. This will do for now. And so the job continued in the shop and we managed to fit the 35 inch tires quite well. So I'm gonna roll a few pics or pictures here of the build and, and enjoy it. Okay, so we managed to fit those 35 inch tires and these, this is a picture of uh, the wheels and tires. It's Moto Metal 17 inch tires. I'll put a link in the description below. Also we uh, did the uh, 35 inch KO2 tires from BF Goodrich. Now we had to drill just a little bit into the, the center of, of the wheel to be able to fit. And here you see a pic of the inflation deflation system, which I will do a more detailed video on at a later time. All right, so uh, we managed to fit those tires under there, and as you can see, they fit quite well. And now we are off the floor in the 4x4 shop when we're on the floor at the paint shop. Now this company, which is called Fonwerk, are the best specialists in uh, building custom building fender flares for all 4x4s nicely, basically. Now they never did uh, a build on the 4th generation chimney. So they had to make it from scratch. Now here you can see I'm trying to fit a fender from uh, another project. Now that didn't fit, so like I said, they had to custom build it and they had to visualize how much it would actually stand out from the vehicle so that would, it would look right. Now we have rules and regulations here in Iceland that uh, they just don't allow vehicles to drive without fender flares at all. So they have to cover uh, the tire base entirely. Why? Because it's basically, it's just dangerous to drive it uh, off-road. You have gravel and, and loose dirt just, uh, yeah, basically all over the place. And they can just hazard this to other vehicles passing or behind the vehicle. So we go by the rules here in Iceland as you can see. Now the final stance, this is not the final stance of the vehicle or the height as you can see, it stands about four feet up to the top of the bonnet. But I'll roll some pics or pictures of the time it's spent or the six weeks it's spent in the fender flares fitting. Enjoy!
Oh man, I thought that came out really good, really good. All right, so now we are back on the floor in the 4x4 shop and we're starting to put in the new X uh, suspension. Now this is November 2019 and uh, one of the few options they had for the chimney at the time was the OME suspension. Uh, a lot of other uh, suspension options have recently come available, but I really can't see any better option for this particular kind of build than the OME suspension. And it's quite reliable and has a lot of uh, very soft, good flex. But of course, we had to make some other uh, minor justifications or modifications on the exhaust and also the, the panhard rods and also basically the lift underneath the car had to be done from scratch basically but I, I thought it came out really nice and and uh, I've driven it about 10,000 kilometers it is just perfect I like it very much now other modifications we did underneath there we put ARB lockers in both front and rear plus we had to build some breathers on, on the diffs and we all, all also we built some some breathers on the transfer case very very important for you, you guys to do that to build uh, breathers because otherwise you can just ruin your your gears if you get water in there if you drive in a lot of water okay the the build went on and I was very very happy with uh, the quality from my good friends at Preter I mean these guys they didn't start their business yesterday I mean they've been doing this for literally 30 years or so so I trust them 100% on, on all the quality and the build and uh, everything has held up really nice since then and uh, like I've said so many times <laughs> I'm just very happy with the outcome I like it here you can see the extra 35 liter fuel tank we installed it underneath there where they had we had the old exhaust and it came out really good really good and we had a built-in pump there and it's connected to uh, an electric control panel in the dashboard we didn't do uh, much other uh, modifications underneath there that would do for now and uh, we did however have some problems with the gear ratio in there but we'll come to that later so I'll roll some some pictures of the build here and enjoy As you can see here, we took the transfer case out and we ordered some uh, new ratios in, in the transfer case, but uh, we found out very soon that it, it didn't fit. We ordered the wrong kit. It was actually meant for the third gen chimney. So we had to change our plans and uh, put in some actual gear ratios, which we did later on through a good friend of mine, Alexander Golek. Germany Golek uh, Auto and uh, the gear ratios went from 413 to 488 
and that works really well with a car today. Okay, so we built some rock sliders underneath the car and those are custom built here in Iceland by a local shop and I thought they came out really really good. So, what do you think guys? I think it came out really good. My vision was finally realizing and I was very happy with it. Here's a sneak peek underneath the car. You can see the extra fuel tank. It fits very nice underneath there and we have a custom made harness also. And uh, this is what I was talking about in the beginning. The, the stance of the car is it's amazing, that's what I think, just amazing. Now our next uh, project was this project here. I took it to a local shop that uh, specializes in rust prevention and this stuff, Prolan, is made out of sheep wool and it's just an amazing stuff. It prevents rust everywhere. So I, I've been very happy with the result of that. And now the the bumper and winch install we put in there an ARB bumper and a Bush Ranger Revo 10S with a synthetic line and the end result was well to put it nicely almost perfect I liked it so the final thing we had to do was the electricity and we basically had to build an extra uh, box in there, a circuit box for all the stuff we put on the car. We put on a new stereo, we put on a new CB radio, we put in um, a special uh, electric control panel and which controls all the lights and everything in the car and uh, that has also been, that has also come out very good. Now the uh, TPMS tire sensor we put in there, uh, I was, I, I didn't believe in it in the beginning, but I put it in behind the speaker as you can see on this picture and it, it has worked really well ever since. So here we are uh, at my, a good friend of mine who is specializes in mapping engines trying to get some extra horsepower uh, out of the car. So to begin with he was trying to find out the right program to map the engine but he, he couldn't find any program with the, uh, the numbers on the computer. But what he did find out when he took the computer out that the computer actually is the same as in a motorcycle Suzuki GSXR 1000. Now he uh, took the data out and he sent it to a good friend of his in Norway, which uh, reprogrammed the computer and sent the data back and he put it, the data in there and back in the car. And that you think that it returned 10 or 12 horsepowers extra. We're not sure, but we had to put it in a dyno bench and we, we can't say for sure because the tires are 35 inches and, and basically you, you have to have the original tires on there to make sure it's the right horsepowers. Now on the dyno bench, uh, it showed about 80 horsepower straight 
into the wheels and that is estimated about 110 or 12 horsepower total and you can really feel the power differ difference on the car it especially when i put the new key ratios in it it really made a difference and you can feel it when you were riding up hills and you were just you know putting that pedal to the metal it the car really moves it moves quite well i was happy with it Okay, so here it all comes together and I'll try and explain to you all the extras in here. Here you can see the uh, electric control panel which I control all the lightings on the car, the air pump and uh, front and rear lockers. This is very handy to do it like that and you can always, it illuminates in the dark and you can see there on the, the front console I, I put in a whole different bunch of stuff I ordered online, basically AliExpress cup holders and phone holders and especially this uh, bag there the, the front dash bag it's pretty neat here's the uh, side armrest and I keep in there the uh, phone for the inflation deflation system and also the remote for the, the winch I have an awesome speaker system in there from Alpine both tweeters uh, six by nine woofers in the back and uh, woofers underneath the seats and crossover controllers for each woofer as you can see on this pick right here so also I put in uh, a CB radio I really like this position it's out of the way and it's very handy to use and I just put the mic underneath there so it's also not in the way okay so we're now outside the vehicle and uh, the final look of it is just well leave a comment below if you like it or if you don't like it well I really like it and the end result is basically what I visioned in the beginning has finally realized at the end and I am just so excited to start uh, testing this car, especially driving in snow, as I talked about in the beginning of this video. Of course, I'll post a lot more videos of the Jimny in action, as you might say. But all the small stuff I put on there, especially as you can see those LED lights on the back there, the illuminated in the dark, it's got some work side lights I put up some uh, quick fish clamps there to keep the Iron Man and the shovel. It's very handy if, if you get in, uh, in trouble to just reach out and grab it. Now also, like I said earlier in this video, I'll do a separate video of the inflation deflation system. I'll go through it step by step on how it's actually done. But basically you, you attach a hose or just lines, plastic lines, in the tire and just flip that valve and be good to go so you see I, I put in some LED side lights also there above the uh, rock sliders so it's very very noticeable in the dark a car now the fog lights uh, it's a relatively cheap setup but I might upgrade those lights later on but the, those are especially good in the snow they the beam really cuts the snow line so it really goes where it's supposed to go now here's a little quick look into the bonnet this is the a or b uh, air pressure compressor and you have an extra outlet there so if the inflation deflation system uh, fails i can pump the tires manually also i put in uh, this is the control box for the inflation deflation system also put in an extra bigger battery it's a 70 amp hour battery and uh, it was quite a problem fitting it in there but we managed to do that anyway and it, this is the cutout for the winch you see here but like I said the end result I am very very happy with and if you think this car is heavily modified now in the beginning of the video I showed you a truck that was really really modified but there's another truck I want to show you before we leave today, just on how
big of a car you can actually modify. And here it is. This is like a 54 inch tire uh, Ford S350. And <laughs> you can see the, the Jimny there beside it. It's just like a, a small nugget car. So basically go larger. I think these two vehicles probably can make the distance if you if you think about the weight of each vehicle and the footprint in the snow I'm pretty sure that both vehicles will travel as far but I want to thank you for watching this video uh, I will post future videos uh, very soon so everybody thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe bye, -bye.